Ariana Anderson, The Story of Christmas. One day, an angel came to visit Mary. And the angel wanted to tell Mary something important, that she was going to have a baby. <laughs> but it was a very special baby. Because God was going to give her the baby. She was going to get married to a man, Joseph. And he has a green shirt. So they had to pack up to go to Bethlehem. They got on a donkey named um, Seesaw. When they got to Bethlehem, there were a lot of people there. He's telling them, do you have any room? Nope, no room. So they were sitting with the cow and the lambs and the birds and a horse. They were in I forgot what it's called. Oh, the stable. Mary and Joseph had to get ready for the baby. Making a cradle. The baby's born. And angels came. They talked to the shepherds. And they said that, come to the manger. And they followed the store to go to the manger. Star. Guys walking on camels, and they look at wise men, and they saw this big bright star in the sky, so they decided to follow it. They were bringing presents to the baby, and when they got there, they saw baby Jesus there. They were giving gifts to Jesus for his birthday. I give gifts to people when it's Jesus's birthday. Happy birthday, Jesus. My name is... It was more fun watching your faces than for me to watch that video. That was, that was a joy for me. And yet we're going to turn a corner a little bit, guys. I, I want to I start off with a quote from the study book we were using um, for the past four weeks as we were going through Christmas from Adam Hamilton. And this is what he said. We cannot appreciate the light Christ brings until we linger in the darkness for a moment. And the reality is that every one of us, every one of us, at least probably in the context of the past year, has been through some darkness or is facing darkness now. For Linda and I, that was the loss of her mom. After two years of fighting with uh, kidney disease, uh, she succumbed, and we, we lost her mom in October. In the midst of that, we had her dad sent to the hospital and found out he has lung cancer. That is our darkness. That is the thing that we are facing right now. And what I know is because I get to talk to some of you is that you have the darkness of loss, somebody that you love, you feel alone. You have the darkness of new diagnosis and wrestling with what you're facing. Some of you wrestle in your marriages and wonder if you're going to make it. Darkness takes many, many different forms. And it doesn't hurt for us to name the darkness, for us to be able to say it hurts, because it does. But that's not the end of the story. The story that we've got is one that says something that gives us an ability to look forward, not just backward, to look to something that is better and bigger, not something that pulls us down and drags us under. So think of the darkness. What is the thing that you are facing? What's your struggle? What's your challenge? Maybe it's the struggle or challenge that nobody else knows that you're struggling with, but you know. And with that darkness in mind, now, hear these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. 
What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen the glory, the glory is of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. We have the ability, as people who follow Jesus Christ, to push back against the darkness. And sometimes we don't even notice the light when it's appearing. I was out walking my dog yesterday. Linda did her usual thing, and she did it again today, by the way. My normal morning routine is get up around 5 a.m., send her off to work. That's what I did today because she should work on Christmas, right? <laughs> she works for the sheriff's department. And so I want to thank, you know, we have one of our police officers here from Largo, and there are people that are working today that want to make a difference, that realize that their job calls them to something different on a very special day and to remember them as well. But as I'm walking my dog, it was 32 degrees, all right? I was determined to get my 10,000 steps yesterday. And so I normally get about 5,000 in my morning walk. So that's the key to getting to my 10,000. If I can get that 5,000 in the first walk in the morning, I have a really good shot at making eight to 10,000 during the day. And as we're walking, I was getting cold. I was so cold that when I got back, my toes were hurting. I pulled out a blow dryer and started blowing the blow dryer on my toes. I was so cold. And as I'm walking along, you all have pets, right? You know, many of you have dogs and stuff. And you walk, do you talk to your dog? Does your dog talk to you? My dog talked to me yesterday. And my dog, as we're walking along, and I'm looking, and I can see darkness on this side and stars, and you can just start to see the hint of light on this side. And my dog turned to me and said, did you notice the sun's coming up a little bit earlier today? <laughs> because it is. It is. We think about winter solstice, and we hear it, and we get it from a mental perspective, but the reality is, is that sometimes as light is breaking into our world, we don't really notice it. We might know it, but we don't notice that the sun came up even a little bit earlier today than it did when I walked yesterday. And maybe one of the great gifts for us to be able to do is to start noticing the small things, to notice the light, when we gather here for the whole season of Advent, there's this wonderful stand over here, right? You see the Advent wreath, and we light the candle, and we light the candles as we come to each single week. Hope, faith, joy, peace, they all get lit over time. And with each lighting of the candle, we happen to be in a room that is filled with light, so we don't notice but the point is, with each single light, I go and light the first candle, and there's light. I go and light the second candle, and there's what? More light. I go and light the third candle, and now there's more, more light. And then I go and light the fourth candle, and there's more, more, more light. And then we gather on Christmas Eve, and we may not notice. We may not notice it. And then we get to Christmas Eve, and the room goes dark. And the Christ candle is lit. And it doesn't stop there, does it? 
Because then we walk over and, and we take a little candle, a dinky little candle, and we go to that Christ candle and we, we light it. And then we go and we pass that off to ushers who go and suddenly it goes row after row after row after row of light growing. And what they did last night was they left the lights on and you could hardly notice until they suddenly turned the lights off. And the darkness of these powered electrical lights couldn't stand against the light of the candles in the room or the voices of the choir that sounded like angels. Then, what did we do? Yeah. And after that, what did we do? We blew out the candles. You're going to go home, and within probably the next week, you're going to take down your Christmas lights. You're going to pack away your Christmas tree or throw it in the trash. Your home's going to look a little bit different. And yet, you still need the light. And you may not notice that every Sunday that you show up, there's candles lit right here, symbolizing to us Christ's presence. Christ didn't go anywhere. The light still shines. The life, <clears throat> excuse me, the life still shines. I was thinking about this. We had the uh, Christmas Eve Eve service. We had that over in Wesley Hall. I don't know if any of y'all were at that, but we, we watched the Polar Express together. And there was one great line as I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh my gosh, what a great line. And it's the conductor speaking to the kid. This is what he says. Seeing is believing. But sometimes the most real things in the world are things we can't see. Seeing is believing, but sometimes the most real things in the world are things we can't see. And I would probably add to that or notice. And one of the things that I love about John's gospel is that it's probably for me one of the most really real stories of Christmas because it's not centered on pregnancy and birth. It's centered on us being light, on the light coming into the world, not just for a moment, not just to celebrate a day, but to be able to celebrate every day. Linda and I, we probably don't do Christmas so well anymore. Our kids are all grown up. We bought, <clears throat> excuse me, the throat's bothering me. We bought each other landscape stones. <laughs> yep, landscape stones and a few plants. Right? Yeah. See, that's what I mean. That's what it's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> However, what's the real light that comes from the stones? What do you say? we're going to put them in together, All right? We're, we're going to be outside. So it's not, it's not just the Christmas morning. It's realizing that something is going to happen that we're going to do together. That for me is sort of like John's gospel. It's like, it's not just the, the moment. It's the moment that follows, the deeper thing, to look at the more spiritual side of things and to realize that's the important thing. That event that we did, Christmas Eve Eve, I want to show you a picture. And maybe you'll get it again. You'll get the idea. Isn't that awesome? So I didn't buy those pajamas. They were bought for me. Because a group of people wanted me to be a part of their group. They wanted me to know that I'm loved. And I want them to know that they are loved. 
Was the present, was the gift, the pajamas? No. The gift was getting to be there together with them, all wearing the same pajamas and enjoying an evening together that we'll remember forever. Light comes in a lot of different forms. And I hope that in the midst of the darkness that you face, that you also acknowledge the light, that you look for it, that you see it, that it brings the things that those candles represent alive inside of you. And especially the candle in the center. May Christ be alive in you, not just today, but every day. Let's pray. God, I am guilty. I'm guilty of not noticing the sun coming up a little bit earlier. I'm guilty of not noticing the candles on the altar. I'm a person that struggles, that hurts. I'm a person that has lost ones that I love. And I want to give it all to you. Help me, God, to be able to see your light, your life, in your son. God, help me to open my heart that that light might shine in me and through me. I ask, God, that you take the gift of your son and that you bless all that are gathered here with us today. Today. Bless those that are online. Bless our world that we all might see light and be light even as we name the darkness. For it shall not overcome it. We pray it in the name of the light, Jesus the Christ. And we all say, amen. Jesus Christ is born. Light is in the world. And Jesus moved from John's gospel of saying, I am the light of the world. And in Matthew's gospel saying, you are the light of the world. Push back against the darkness. God bless you. Go in peace. Merry Christmas. Amen.